Okay, so we just did the analysis for our two-stage Miller compensation, and we found a couple of things out. One, we found what our pull frequencies and zero frequencies were, and if you recall, omega P1 was equal to minus 1 over GM2 times R1 R2 times CC. So this is dominated by the compensation capacitance. Omega P2 is equal to minus GM2 divided by CL approximately. And of course, this depends on the relative size of CL and the internal device capacitances, but this will be our approximation. We had a, a right half plane zero, which is equal to GM2 divided by our compensation capacitance. And this is due to the feed forward effect of the compensation capacitor. And we also could have found that our DC gain a sub zero for the whole amplifier was equal to GM1 R1 times GM2 R2. And we found that in a prior lecture. If we were to plot this in a Bode plot, let's look at the magnitude first. We have log of frequency on this axis and the magnitude of our open loop gain, A sub zero, on this axis. So starting at, or sorry, magnitude of A of S, starting at DC, our gain is equal to A zero. We hit a first pole frequency, omega P one the gain rolls off. We hit our zero, omega Z1, the gain flattens out as the zero cancels the pole. And finally, we hit our second pole, omega P2, and the gain flattens out. Now we could actually show what the magnitude of the gain was at the uh, starting at the zero, and it ends up that it's equal to approximately GM1, little GM1 divided by GM7. We could solve that by substituting the value for omega Z1 uh, in, in uh, omega P1 and omega P2 into our transfer function. Okay, what's the problem with this? Well, one problem is. We want our gain to roll off uh, pretty evenly. Uh, that way, we can make sure that we don't have any gain when our phase, uh, when our um, uh, phase shift is equal to minus 180 degrees, because that means that we're going to have potential for instability. So this right half plane zero causes reduction in amplitude roll off which is going to hurt our phase margin. But the other thing that this right half plane zero does is it increases the phase shift in the negative direction. Remember, a left half plane zero causes a plus 45 degree phase shift at the zero frequency, but a right half plane zero causes a minus 45 degree phase shift. So it causes a reduction in the amplitude roll-off while increasing the negative phase shift. Okay, so now if we go ahead and draw our phase plot here, phase of A of S, We'd see our phase shift would start at zero degrees. At the first pole frequency, it would be minus 45 degrees. Approaching minus 90. Then we get to the second zero, and normal, uh, 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 left half plane zero causes a plus 45 degree phase shift, but this zero causes another 45 degrees of phase shift. So we'll be at 135 degrees, minus 135 degrees at the zero.
approaching minus 180 degrees at higher frequency. And then as we get to our second pole frequency, we would be at a total of minus 225 degrees phase shift. And this would be approaching minus 270 degrees at very high frequency. Well, the problem that we see here is that by the time we get to where our, if we were to configure this amplifier in some kind of closed loop configuration, we could definitely easily see situations where our phase shift would be problematic for us and potentially cause us to have instability. So we're going to stop uh, at this point for the, the next lecture. All we really need to know um, from this lecture is how to size our compensation capacitor. And we learned how to size our compensation capacitor and that it is just proportional To, or our CC is equal to GM1 divided by omega P2 times our closed loop gain for a 45 degree phase margin. And CC is equal to 1.73 times GM1 divided by omega P2 times ACL for a 60 degree phase margin. But bear in mind that when we when we uh, start up after the exam, we're going to have to figure out how to deal with this right half plane zero that's gonna cause our phase shift to be problematic.